guys, this is Frank with Tiny Plastic Spaceman. Well, this is going to be a video series where I have the privilege to be building uh, something pretty cool. I've got it just off camera here. Uh, it comes in this big red box. Um, actually, not just this big red box, but uh, also this big red box. And lots of white boxes like these. Uh, so what comes in this sort of box, you might ask? This bad boy. I'm going to um, just build this the best I can, uh, starting with the unboxing. Um, there's going to be a couple of unboxing videos because uh, uh, my buddy who has, whose Titan this is, um, he bought every single weapon option there is. So that will be the second unboxing video and then after that we'll move into uh, everything else. Um, so that should be interesting and fun and uh, hopefully enjoyable to watch and you guys get a kick out of it. So without further ado, let's crack on. Okay, so here is the first box of the Titan Warlord. Um, Hopefully my lights, uh, the batteries in my lights will uh, work <laughs> long enough. If not, um, I'll just swap them out as I go. Um, so I've got a little bit more space here uh, in front of me. I don't have a tripod in front of my face like I've had in uh, my previous unboxing videos and working videos. So I've got a little bit more space here to, to show off all the stuff that's in the box. So first of all, um, I think this box is, is actually, well, I mean, it's a box, but there's a little bit of a history behind it because it was, um, I believe this box was first debuted for the Warlord Titan when it f was first released. Um, I think it's a couple years old now, actually, the model. Um, so, anyway, it's, it's, it's quite cool. It's, it is the biggest box that uh, Forge will do. You can see how, how deep it is. Um, I don't have my a ruler handy, but you can see how big it is. This is definitely the biggest box. Um, if you buy, say, a Typhon or a Sakaran, it comes in this size box, uh, which is already pretty big. Um, of course, it won't fit in frame because it's resting on top of the Titan box, but you see how big it is. This is, um, I think, what you the size you would get like a, a, a Land Raider uh, box normally, but obviously it's white because it's uh, Forge World, and it's a normal, you know, like slips over the top sort of box. But this is the biggest box that they do. Um, and <clears throat> This box is the first of the boxes um, that I'm opening because it's got all the biggest pieces in it. It's got all the carapace pieces um, and everything. So first thing we're going to do is um, we're going to always, always, always look at the instruction. Uh, the, well, the construction guide, we should say. Um, and I think what's cool is actually... Let's see if it's in here. I can't remember. There is a... Uh, a verification sheet sort of thing. Can't remember where it is. Uh, if it's, but my my friend probably has it. I mean, this isn't my Titan. I'm building this again for a friend of mine. Um, but here we go. So, you may have seen this in other in other uh, uh, videos. But yeah, there's all the torso components, and there's the leg components. So that's a lot of components. And of course, all these little circles. Those are individual. Those are just the numbers. They're not extra pieces. Um, so yeah, there's a lot to this model. There's 56 uh, pieces and actually there's multiples of many of them. You can see there's four cylinders and rods and whatnot, uh, las cannons and stuff like that, doubles of those, leg couplings, things like that. So th there is a lot going on. Um, and I think what they've done is they've, I mean this is the first model, uh, Titan model that I've built. So I'll just get that out there right away. Um, but uh, they, it seems that they've learned a lot from the previous models that they've done, which were all hand done and kind of photocopy uh, instruction manuals. Um, so they're not quite as smooth and slick as these newer ones, uh, you know, that are full color and with all the computer aided design or CAD drawings uh, that you can see there. Um, yeah, so preparing the model for assembly. Now I do have a, uh, a video series that uh, tells you all about all the tools that you need. 
um, how to uh, use hot water to rebend stuff and all that stuff. And you can check that out in my, uh, in further in the YouTube channel. Um, so, uh, but here it's, it's funny. It just says to glue the resin pieces together, use Citadel super glue, <laughs> but almost no one does. Um, just normal super glue. Uh, I prefer to use something like, uh, let's see, something like this from Deluxe Materials. This is medium strength glue. You can see it's five to ten seconds that's medium uh so it's it's thick it's not super runny like water like uh, the really thin stuff uh this i think the thin super glue is the uh citadel what they call it um but you know everyone has their preferences a lot of people use uh, two-part epoxy as well for the really important uh joints like right here uh where the hips actually connect everywhere uh to the legs and um, and I'm planning to also use a, uh, if not a, a steel screw, at least a brass rod that will go through uh, these pieces here to hold it together. Um, pretty good that they're telling you to consider the pose. Um, test it out first. Um, adhesive putty may be helpful. Yeah, so, you know, basically blue tack or poster tack. So obviously you start with the hips, the feet, the lower legs, um, and then by the time you finish these pages, you've done all of this. And there's a lot of these little pistons that go around the edge of the hip here when that's meant to spin around. So that's an important piece, this, uh, this one right here. Uh, and then you start on the big, massive uh, hollow of the main uh, body, you know, the, the, the upper body of the, of the whole thing, which is pretty cool. I do like that there's, a, there's actually a like a walkway, a ramp around this thing, because it you know just gives an idea of the size. Um, yeah, it's quite big. I did see one of these just over the weekend. So here, uh, putting on the extra pieces. I think a lot of these, like the 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 armor pieces, basically are all going to be glued on separately uh, as a last sort of thing. This is very important because this is going to be what I'm planning to do. I think is the upper the upper arm is going to be basically uh, in well non repositionable, uh, but the lower arm will be you'll be able to tilt this up and down, um, and that just means. Uh, it's less moving parts. It makes it a little bit, well, a lot simpler rather than having this be able to turn side to side. Um, you can imagine how much work that will be because it's not really meant to, because all of these pieces are separate individual pieces, magnetizing all of these joins will be a nightmare. So uh, basically all of these are going to be glued in place and then the individual separate arms uh, are going to be just go in there. And I'm probably going to do what I saw on another video I saw, basically just get um, uh, steel sheeting and glue it onto the sides there and just have magnets on either side. So that's the plan. Um, and then also have a couple of magnets in the top to act as um, just to extra extra strength to hold those on. Here's all the armor pieces. Um, so this is the one that they have you glue on. So it looks like you can access that pretty easily uh, after all of the superstructures put on. Um, and then all of these overlap. And then this is uh, the other the other cool bit. These were the weapons that were initially released, but now there's also uh, um, uh, rocket launchers and there's a bunch of different there's plas massive plasma gun there's all sorts of things that are for the arm weapons and of course a different head and these are well just examples <laughs> really lots of lasers on those things and of course there's you don't really can't really see them here but there's like las cannons up here so if you know how big a normal las cannon is say on a i don't know lehman russ or something like that that's a Laz Cannon up there in its armpit, and there's one on that side, and then there's a pair, a matching pair on the back of these to act as uh, infantry point defense uh, weaponry. So gives you an idea how how big these things are. So anyway, let's um, get this out of the way and um, dive in here. Uh, so one of the things that we got is 
We're going to be definitely Legio S Storum. And these are the decal sheets that you can get from Forge World, of course. Now this is the sort of stuff that is just, you really wouldn't want to paint these sorts of, uh, I mean, you can, but you know, when you get into this sort of detail, just use the transfers, man. Um, and there's some cool, there's already some pre-made uh, name badges and campaign uh, badges. Um, so that will look super, super cool. I think this was one of the very first that was available because it says copyright 2015 on it as well. All right. So let us, okay, so here we go. These are one side of the elbow mounts, looks like, or either that or, yeah, I think these are the elbow mounts. So you can see that these aren't really conducive to just drill out this side and put a pin through it. You can do that. I saw um, an Australian fellow do that on his build blog. Um, I, it's not really for me. I think it's a bit too much of a faff. So there's those two. And, you know, they're identical pieces, so not a whole lot going on there. It's pretty good. So we're getting into the bubble wrap, and there's many layers of it. It's going all over the place already. And here we go. So this is one of the pieces um, that I really was a little bit worried about, but this is actually perfectly straight. So that is very good. Because you see how long and flat this is, um, if the resin isn't mixed uh, just right, or uh, there's a little bit of a bend here, that's not too bad. Uh, it just depends, because I'm going to be using uh, uh, big, uh, I can't remember, like just woodworking clamps to hold all this stuff together. I, I've actually bought woodworking clamps of various sizes specifically for this build and uh, for my Thunderbolt. Um, or Thunder... Thunderbolt? Yeah. Thunderbird. <laughs> can't remember what it's called. Um, yeah, so there's the other side. And these are, of course, can't remember which side faces to the front, but these are the out the the, the top sides of the uh, the main body. And here's the top of the shoulder pieces. These pieces, those those are just shims or flashing. Um, no big deal. Easily removed. And here's the other piece, and these look uh, identical. It's one of the shoulder plates. That's how it fits. I mean, you can see it, it's bigger than my hand. It's amazing. It's going to be so cool. So you can see how it actually fits in here once this gate is removed. You can see how that will actually fits in okay there. So, yeah. Uh, let's see, where else is this? Lots, lots more bubble wrap. So here again, more armor plating. So these pieces, basically just going to clip them off. There's someone's hair there. Um, clip them off and then uh, obviously wash everything. And But I'll be prepping these separately. That looks like a bit of a, there's a little bit of a repair that needs, not repair, but need to bend, either bend this one in or bend this one out. You can see the bend just on these two plates there. So all these armor plates are gonna be among the last things to paint, but I'm gonna prime everything all, all, all at the same time. So um, I just like having having the steps, the visible steps go through. They really layered this uh, bubble wrap. So there's another, I think that's a lower leg plate. You can see how it's a, also a bit of a bend, the same exact sort of bend. Not a big deal. Very sturdy casting gate on that. Look at that. Big sucker. Ah, here is a very important piece. This is what the waist is actually going to rest on. Plop, right there. So one of the important things for me to figure out is whether I want to magnetize this. That is, drill a big hole in there and put a gigantic magnet there. Or just literally just bolt it in place. Um, and then build the carapace all around this because this is the base of the main body So this is on top of the hips 
Um, and yeah, I'm gonna have to decide on that. Um, basically just ask my buddy what he wants to do. Whether he wants the torso to be able to twist, if you played Battletech or anything like that. Um, you know, so it can twist and move aside. He's not really into the modeling, the posing on the actual table. Um, like I am, so he might not be fussed about that. If it were mine, I would want the torso to us, but it's not my model. So it's his model. I'll let him decide and uh, tell me how he wants me to do it. Um, I may be... Maybe this... Is that the bottom? No, I think this is one of the shoulder pieces. Let's see if we find a matching piece. And this is uh, that part that goes on the head. One of the first armor plates that gets glued in place. And that looks like one of the back pieces. It's a matching back piece, obviously missing the gate. Okay, so now we're getting into the towards the bottom here. Um, yeah, there's, so there's the top. Look at the size of that chunk of resin. I mean, if you have ever put together a Sakaran, that might be the biggest piece of resin that you've ever handled. Um, those, the the whole pieces, and especially those side pieces, those really thick side pieces. Um, but this could possibly be the biggest piece of resin I've ever handled until we actually get to the uh, weapons, the arm weapons. But it, I love how it's got all these ribs here to help support the weight um, and distribute all that. There's a little tiny hatch here for a dude. Uh, okay, so I think these... Oh no, that's the hip. That's the hip joint there. So there's going to be the uh, bits that come off, and then the legs will sit there. And then... I think I was right initially. That is the hip there. So it looks like I will be able to, once these casting gates are removed, that will sit on top, and I can literally just bolt this in place with some... Uh, either one gigantic bolt or probably two or three bolts. Um, there's a big chunk of resin there that I'm going to have to saw off, looks like, but not a big deal if you have the right tools. And ah, these are the feet, so they'll face like that. I love how that the bottoms are have detail on them, even though. You'll probably never see them. I mean, most people love to put like, you know, they'll buy like a, a hundred pound model, like a Typhon or a, something like that, or even a Sakaran or even a, 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 you know, a couple of Dreadnoughts or something like that with these Titans stomping on, on uh, you know, a hundred pound model. Um, just blows my mind, but um, luckily don't have to do that. Uh, this one's just going to be, they're not, these aren't meant to be like super mobile, so... Um, it's just going to be standing in place. So these are the grills that go in the back. You can see that they're also, you know, like, you know, semi-hollow, uh, so to speak. I'm going to start putting these back because once I finish this box, I'm going to cut the recording and uh, open the next box. So these are the elbow joints. And it looks like the casting gates have already been cut off with very, very sturdy side cutters, I imagine, because that's some thick resin there. Um, so if I'm correct, and I believe I am, unless these are the leg, I think these are just the, where's the shoulder, uh, where's the shoulder pieces, hmm, I don't know, without, without opening up the, the, the manual, uh, I don't want to bore anybody, but, you yeah, know, anyway. So these are the, the what the the void shield generators um, rest on, and these will be drilled out so that the they can be popped off, um, which is pretty handy, I think. Um, so you can show just how many void shields are left. Um, so that's pretty cool. And I've seen people do lighting and stuff like that on these. Not really my thing. Um, I think you know. Once you've seen one model with it, it's like, well, but it's still cool. I can't, I can't knock it too much, really. Yeah, so these are definitely the elbow pieces. I'm just thinking as I'm opening these up. So these are the upper leg pieces. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to put these back and bust open the next box. So I'll be right back.
Okay, so here we are with part two of the Warlord Titan unboxing. Um, I came up with that title um, because I'm super mega clever and this is the second box of the unboxing. Um, part three will be all of the weapons. Um, all of the weapons. There's so many weapons. Um, <laughs> but uh, anyway, let's try not to make too much noise with the with the bubble wrap. Um, it's a bit unavoidable and it sounds really super crinkly and annoying, so that's why I kind of sped through that bit. And also that bit there. <laughs> um, because these these boxes are great, they're nice and sturdy, but um, they don't actually overlap quite enough or the glue just isn't strong enough to hold it in place. So um, basically what we've got in this box are the smaller pieces. Um, if this can be called small, um, you know, keep in mind that a figure is about one inch high, so it's about that big. This is a lower leg of the Titan and these are that's the kneecap, uh, that's the kneecap armor plate. <laughs> so, uh, this is taller than your normal Space Marine, even a Primera Space Marine, uh, scale creep, uh, uh, notwithstanding. So, um, yeah, very, uh, very big model. Uh, even with these so-called smaller, uh, pieces. So, um... Yeah, so what we're going to do is um, just just go through these. I'm not going to go through every single piece. Um, I'll just try to identify some of them as we go along. I'll just push that out of the way. These here, this, this one's pretty easy. This is the easiest one to deal with. Um... I'm waiting for the for the time that uh, Forge will actually update their their bags because these are sort of the iconic I buy expensive resin stuff uh, bags, isn't it? Um, so these are the individual toe pieces. There's going to be I think eight in total. So there you go. Um, there's lots of them. Again, um, you know that that's about an inch. I don't have a a, a guy here to for scale, but you know they're big. They're quite big. Uh, you can see there's there's uh, paintable areas on each on each one of these. Um, again, I'm not going to go through every single one of these, but uh, there you go. That is sort of this is one of the uh, uprights that rests against this here. This is the the lower leg and it will rest there and this bottom round piece will rest inside that big round uh, toe or the foot plate the central foot plate that these all pivot in so actually no it rests right there and then these pivot in those in that big four-way plate um yeah so there's a lot of these um now, usually what I do is I kind of look for bubbles, uh, miscasts, um, how am I going to deal with cutting off this uh, massive casting gate, that sort of thing. Um, but there's not a gigantic amount. Um, I mean, I, I'm not seeing anything, I should say, um, that is jumping out at me. And, you know, uh, similar to the way I deal with, uh, with uh, tanks is that... Um, if there is a miscast or there is a bubble, just you cover it up with mud or rust or something like that. It's okay. So this next bag is um, it looks like all the leg pieces. I will empty this out because I want to kind of try and figure out um, what is happening. Don't, probably don't need to get every single piece out, but um, yeah. So the like I said, this is the lower leg piece. Somewhere here, that's the, this is the knee, so that will rest there, as you can see on the video. And then the upper leg piece kind of fits around this, sort, sort of like that, and that's where this pivots. And then those lower pieces will kind of ride up and down this area here, um, these in these in these ridges. Those, those four pivots will move up and down here. Um, hopefully that makes some sort of sense. 
Um, let's see. Wow. Uh, don't can't identify that one off the top of my head. Or that one. This must be for the upper shoulder or something like that. Obviously, these are all armor plates. I'm just trying to see. They don't actually go around here. Oh, no, we, we saw these in the other box, the, the pieces that go around this, I believe. So, yeah. Anyway, um, again, no bubbles, not seeing any mishaps or miscastings or anything. So the next bag, uh, let's see. Let's do the very smallest pieces last. So these are... Just like vents and armor pieces and just various things I can't immediately identify. But yeah, there's some armor plating. Some big vents. Look at those. Big and chunky. That is a chunk of resin there. Um, yeah, more stuff. Uh, this is, I believe... This is going to be... There's going to be a weapon. I think the weapon goes on that. And then that elbow piece that we saw in the first box kind of fits around this, I think. Um, yeah. Lots of big chunky pieces in here. Can't identify that off the top of my head. I haven't... I don't memorize the instruction manuals. I just kind of go through it as I go through it. Um, right, so the last bag are the smallest pieces. There's quite a few. Not as many as you would think, though, um, with something this size, because even though this is um, the biggest model that Forge will do, oh, I like how the Void Shell generators are in their own separate bag, that's cool. Again, all these are going to get clipped off, these little mounting nubs, and they're just going to get drilled out and have uh, two or three mil uh, magnets put on them. Um, even though this is the biggest model that Forge will do, um, you know, the, the smallest pieces are, like, if you put together any of their Serastus Knights, the, these are probably the smallest pieces, the, the, the hydraulic pistons or um, the... the opposite ends of the hydraulic pistons, you know, um, or these las cannons, those are a bit bendy. <laughs> those definitely need to be fixed. <laughs> um, and these are those important pieces that all the pistons fit onto, and these have to actually spin around. Um, yeah, so uh, there's not very many small pieces. Uh, possibly the smallest pieces are these um, that go uh, the handrails that go around the back of the body where that the, the big entrance hatch is but other than that um, there's there's really not a huge amount here I think um, once we get into things like the head which obviously again this model does not come with a head or weapons uh, which is uh, no weapons is a normal thing for the the uh, forge world titans but no head is kind of a new thing because I think there's two or three option heads and then Warhammer world um, has a specific uh, Warhammer World only model for the head. And of course, that's what is going on this one. So, uh, I will pack this away. There we go. It's packed away. Um, and that is it for part two. This is, that's the complete Warlord unboxing video. The next video in the series will be all of the, of the uh, weapons uh, and the head. So... There's a lot more chunky resin goodness to come in this video series. So there you have it. That's the complete Warlord kit unboxing. And of course, the heads that are available are not included in the kit, nor are the weapons included. But those will be unboxed in the very next video in this playlist, so be sure to check that out. If you have any questions at all, be sure to ask them in the uh, comments down below. I'll be sure to read and try to answer every single one of those. Um, now there will be a complete uh, build series going on so be sure and check out all the rest of the videos in this playlist and thanks again for watching. We'll see you in the next video.
Bye. Hi again, this is Frank from Tiny Plastic Spacemen. Uh, thanks so much for watching the video and all the way to the end. How about that? Um, if you do have any questions, be sure to ask them in the comments down below. I do read every single one and I do try to answer every single one that I get. Now if you like the video, give us a thumbs up. I do appreciate every single like and comment that I get on the videos. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button. You know you want to. Thanks again for watching.